What's up everybody, it's Andrew Cuts here and I'm back with another video. Uh, so this video is going to be kind of a low slash mid fade. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me for longer, uh, more in-depth tutorials. So this video is going to be a little bit longer. I'm really going to be breaking down exactly what I'm doing. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy. So as you can see, I'm starting things off. I got my uh, Andis Masters. I got the lever all the way closed and I'm just setting in my initial guideline. Um, so actually what I'm going to do in this in this video is I'm going to show you guys um, how to do a fade using just the clipper and then once I do the fade with just the clipper I'm going to come behind it with the trimmers and the shaver um, and then you know take things to another level but I wanted to show you guys how to do it with just a clipper first uh, just because a lot of people have been saying you know they don't have all the tools they might only just have one clipper uh, so I want to show you guys those steps first. Um, so as you can see, I, I'm making my line all the way around. My clipper was kind of jamming up a little bit at first there, so that's why I just got a brush and dusted things off. Uh, that's kind of what you want to do if your clipper ever starts to jam up. It's good to you know have a brush nearby that you can get all those loose hairs uh, you know out of the way. And if you have any cool care or oil, uh, that can sometimes help too to kind of loosen things up. But as you can see, I'm just you know balding everything out. Um, Another question I've gotten a good amount was, you know, what if my hair isn't as short as yours to start out with? Um, and the answer to that question is, well, you can just throw on like a number two guard or a number three guard and just remove all that bulk right off the bat. So if you do have longer hair, you're going to want to take it down first with a number two guard or a number three guard just to make the fade process uh, a lot easier. So, you know, once you get that bulk removed with the two or the three, then you're going to go in and do what I just did there with the clipper all the way closed. So now I'm going to set in my first guideline here. Um, I got my lever all the way open and I'm going up about an inch, inch and a half. Uh, especially for beginners, if when you're doing fades, you're going to want to kind of stretch your guidelines out. The bigger that you make them, the easier it's going to be to fade. Uh, the smaller, more compact you make them, uh, the more difficult it's going to be to fade so really stretch them out obviously don't make them too big but you know about an inch and a half is usually a pretty good um, spot to have it at especially for beginners as you can see I'm just going all the way around making things even on both sides I'm using the uh, self-cut system uh, 2.0 I think it is uh, as my mirror I'm loving that so far I'm gonna be coming out with a review on that mirror pretty soon. So now I got my number one guard on. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention was, uh, I, I said how I was just gonna show how to do a fade with just the clipper to start out. I'm also only gonna be using two guards. I'm only gonna be using the one guard and the two guard. I'm not gonna be using a half guard or one and a half guard. So that was something that people were asking for. You know, how can I fade if I only have two guards? So. I'll show you guys how to do that in this video. But as you saw, I just went up about another inch, inch and a half with uh, that number one guard all the way open. So now I'm gonna come in with my two guard. I'm gonna start with it all the way open. I'm just pretty much going straight up. And by going straight up, it's gonna blend everything into the top and uh, not create any harsh lines. So you just wanna go straight up, you know, really over exaggerate that motion and just go straight up as if you're head with a box. So now I'm just gonna point out kind of the three lines that need to be faded out in order for this fade to come together. So you got that bottom line, the middle line, and then you got, you know, a good amount of dark uh, areas around the ridge of your head. So this bottom line is usually the hardest one to get out. Um, so as you can see, I'm starting with this line and uh, I got my lever all the way closed and I'm just flicking at that line, kind of knocking it up about, you know, a quarter of an inch. And now I'm going to open the lever up to about halfway and just knock that line up another quarter inch. You really just want to take your time with this. This is sped up a little bit, um, but, you know, just really take your time. Make sure you're not going up too high. I don't know if you saw there, I, I just moved that notch open a little bit more. I got my lever about three quarters of the way open now and I'm just fading that line out the rest of the way. So start with it closed, knock it up, open to halfway, knock it up a little bit more, and then 
open it to uh, three quarters of the way and you should have it completely faded out. So I'll let you watch me do the same steps on this side. You also want to notice that I'm not going up higher above that uh, that middle guideline. So that's a good thing about starting uh, at the bottom line, removing the bottom line first, uh, is you have that middle guideline uh, to make sure that you're not going too high. So you see that middle line, you know you want to stay below it uh, until you start working out that middle line. So now we're going to begin working out that middle line that I just pointed out there. Uh, if you remember, that line is kind of what was set in with uh, the one guard open. So now we're going to go in with our one guard closed. And uh, sometimes the one closed will take this line out and sometimes it won't at all. As you can see here, it's really not doing much at all. Um, so usually what you would do uh, if you can't get that line out with the one closed is you would come behind it with uh, the zero guard or the half guard and uh, work that line out. But not everybody has a half guard. Uh, I actually don't have my half guard for these clippers, uh, the Andis guards, uh, with me at the time I was doing this haircut. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can get this line out uh, without even using a half guard. So as you can see, I got my clipper with no guard on. Uh, I have the lever all the way open and I'm only using my corners. So that's what you're gonna do. Uh, that's what the substitute's gonna be for not having a half guard. Uh, just use your clipper all the way open and only use the corners. So just to give you guys an idea of what that's actually doing is uh, by only using the corners, it's pretty much just breaking that line up, but it's not cutting off too much. So if you were to use the whole blade, it would definitely take too much off and uh, it just wouldn't give the illusion of a fade um, by just using the corner. It's literally putting small you know, fractures in that line and just helping everything to blend. So you just wanna have a light hand and just only use the corners, break that line up as much as you can. I do have to apologize. My hair was a lot shorter um, than I wanted it to be. And the reason for that was, I don't know if you guys saw uh, the Mario video that my sister did. She put a Mario design in the back of my head and it just kind of was getting annoying. It like felt weird on the back of my head. So I ended up just taking my head down the, or the sides in the back at least. I took it down to like a zero all the way around. And um, I let it grow back in for probably like a week or so, but it just wasn't uh, as long as I would have liked it to be uh, for this video. So as you saw there, I had my two guard on. I had the lever all the way closed. And I was just kind of lightening up the, uh, the ridge of my head there. So at this point, this is usually when you would come in with uh, the one and a half guard. But since I don't have a one and a half guard for this clipper, I'm going to show you guys what you can do um, if you don't have a one and a half guard. So we're pretty much doing the same thing we did before. Um, we're just using the corner of our blade and the one guard all the way open. And by just using the corner, we're going to lighten up any dark spots that we see. So at this point, um, this is without going back and really detailing anything. Uh, this is what the fade would pretty much look like if you don't have a trimmer or a, uh, a foil shaver. So this is just with the clipper. This is kind of the end result. Um, but now I'm going to show you guys what you can do if you do have a trimmer uh, to kind of add another level of transition to the fade. So was, with my finger there, I just pointed out where we set that line in with the clippers. So you kind of want to remember where you set that line in and then you're going to want to come in with your trimmers just below that point. So I like to keep, you know, this trimmer uh, transition pretty low. You don't want to go too high with your trimmers or you're going to end up uh, creating another guideline or not a guideline, but you're just going to end up going too high into the fade and just creating, uh, you know, harsh lines that you don't want. As you can see, I'm just trying to keep things low with my trimmer and just flicking out uh, so that I'm not creating any new lines. So 
So there with my finger, I'm just pointing out. Um, there was kind of like some areas at the bottom of the fade that I wasn't too happy with. They just needed to be worked out a little bit. So I came in with my trimmers and just used the corners uh, just to lighten up that area, help it to blend a little bit more. So now we're gonna come in just below where we came in uh, with our trimmers and we're gonna add another level of transition using our foil shaver. And same thing that we did with the trimmers, we're gonna you know, flick out uh, very slightly the higher we get up into the fade. And also the same thing applies, you don't wanna go too high with the shavers either because this will create a harsh line as well if you go too high. Another good trick with the, uh, the shavers, if uh, you're struggling to get your bottom guideline out, uh, going downward with your shavers can really just soften that line up and help it uh, to fade out. You want to keep in mind, the whole haircut, you just want to have a light hand. So as you can see right here, I'm doing exactly what I just mentioned, going downward on that line just to make sure everything's blended out. You can also kind of use your finger uh, to make sure that when you use the shavers it's all the way down to the skin if it still feels like stubble you might want to go back in with the shaver and just make sure it's all the way down to the skin now i'm just tapering in my beard a little bit i'm just kind of doing the top half i've made a bunch of videos on you know fading the beard and all that so you guys can go check them out now we're going to start lining everything up I don't like to go super crazy with my lineup. I don't line it all the way uh, across the front because I'm actually trying to grow it back out on top. Uh, so I just kind of line up the corners, making sure that I'm not pushing anything back. You always want to take your time with the lineups. Start out by just taking very, very small amounts off. And these are the uh, Andis Slimline Pros that I'm using here. One of my favorite uh, trimmers. So now we got everything pretty much lined up. Uh, I'm just coming in with Another trimmer that I had, these are the wall detailers. I actually just got these, my my boy hooked me up with these. Uh, I'll show you guys his Instagram in a sec, but uh, they were old trimmers that he had. He passed them down to me and I've always wanted to use these. I've heard a lot of good things about them and uh, the little bit that I have used them, I'm, I'm really, really liking them a lot. So shout out to uh, my boy Matteo for hooking me up with these. I think these are really good for uh, bringing out these hooks here. The C cups especially, they just, they really help that to pop. And they don't irritate the skin either. I, I could go over my skin a hundred times with those uh, trimmers and they don't really bother me. I, I know it's different for everybody, but. Just a quick side note guys, if you're not following my Instagram already, uh, definitely go follow me on there. I put out a lot of shorter videos and uh, tips and stuff like that. Uh, but you know, let me know down in the comments what you guys wanna see. If you like the shorter videos on Instagram, uh, if you wanna see you know longer videos like this on my YouTube or whatever, let me know what you guys wanna see. We're getting so close to that 5,000 mark. Uh, for the subscribers, so definitely uh, if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button for me. So 
So now I'm just going in touching up the beard a little bit. I actually made a full um, beard video for this cut. I also did a little eyebrow tutorial. Uh, so if you guys want me to drop them, uh, definitely let me know down in the comments. I was a little hesitant at first just because I do already have two beard videos on my page. Uh, I don't want it to be too repetitive or anything like that. So now I'm going to uh, hit this line up with the razor. I got the Tune 45 shave gel here. And uh, I've had this stuff for a while. Uh, I like it. It's pretty good. Uh, I think I like the Elegance a little bit better than this. Um, but this is a good product. I use it a good amount. Um, I don't always like to use shave gel when I'm doing my lineups. I traditionally like to just uh, do the dry razor. But since I kind of uh, really hit those C cups pretty good, I wanted to just make sure I was using the shave gel just to get it a close shave as possible. You want to notice how I'm stretching that skin. That's a must when you're using the straight razor. As you can see, doing that lineup really just brought the fade together. Um, I'm the type of person who likes to add, you know, lines, designs, and you know as many fades as I can. Uh, this is the the finished product before I add this line that I wanted to add. Um, but I thought it came out pretty good. The lighting's kind of whack back there, but looks pretty blurry for you know what I was working with, as I mentioned before. Uh, my hair really wasn't as long as I wanted it to be to really, you know, give it a clean transition like I would have wanted to. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this line in place. Um, as you can see there, I just imagined the line I was going to put in. I didn't have my trimmer on at that point. I just was kind of getting the muscle memory down just to where I was going to put the, the trimmer. And you always want to start with a smaller line and then you know, work your way uh, into a bigger line. You don't want to try to make it too big on the first pass. Just work, work it uh, out a little bit and uh, you know, step back, look at it, see if you want to make it bigger or not. So I came with the wall detailers at first. Um, like I said, those are a new trimmer. I'm not too familiar with them. So I just switched over to my Indus Slimline Pro uh, just because I've used that a million times on you know, different designs on myself and other people. So I kind of know how it cuts. But just using these the slim lines and the wall detailers, you pretty much get it down to the skin. Um, sometimes 
sometimes I come in behind it with a razor, sometimes I don't. I've had times in the past where I've given myself, you know, lines, and uh, they look good when I do them with the trimmer, and then I come behind it with the razor, and it can make the line look a little bit too thick, so it's kind of something you just have to play by ear. If you like the way it looks with the trimmer and you feel like it doesn't need the razor, then you don't necessarily have to use the razor, but I decided to use it here. I'm just trying to get better at it, so. I'm just being really light with it, making sure I'm not going too low, and making sure I'm not cutting any hair outside the line. I'm just cutting all that stubble that's inside of the line. Here I'm just sharpening up those edges a little bit more now that the uh, the gel kind of dried up a little bit. I'm just coming behind and doing some uh, some dry work. This is pretty much the uh, final look here. Let me know what you guys thought. Um, let me know if you guys like this longer type tutorial where I kind of really go in depth with what I'm doing. I really hope it was helpful, you know, with the going over what you can do if you don't have a half guard and a one and a half guard. If you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button for me. I'm going to be doing a giveaway once I hit 5,000 subscribers. And, you know, we're inching closer and closer to that margin. So thank you guys so much. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.